students have you ever wondered when tea is kept in a thermos flask it remains hotter for a longer period of time in comparison to the tea which is kept in a ceramic pot our existence of life is energy the conversion of one form of energy to another form is a basis of the universe so have you ever wondered how in a photosynthesis process light energy is getting converted into chemical energy how the food we are consuming is utilized in doing some work and the rest is stored in our body all these sorts of energies are the examples that come from the thermodynamics so hello i am dr rupasna i'll be introducing you to the chemical thermodynamics what are thermodynamic functions what is first law of thermodynamics and how it is applied to calculate various thermodynamic properties to know more about this topic you can refer to the book by s chan publishing and the link of the ebook is given in the description box thermodynamics is a branch of science that deals with the motion of heat thermo stands for heat dynamics means flow so it is a flow of heat energy why do we study thermodynamics we uh, know that in the haber's process during the formation of ammonia uh, nitrogen and hydrogen gas is required but what are the ambient conditions what is the temperature what is the pressure that can be obtained from thermodynamics also let's say you are building up an engine and the two engines are uh, running on different uh, fuels one is Uh, running on methanol and another let's say is uh, is on the electrochemical fuel cell which engine will have higher efficiency which engine will run faster that is a application of thermodynamics so there are n number of uh, applications that how the energy is converting heat energy is converting into work and uh, other forms but there are also the limitations of thermodynamics in the thermodynamics uh, we only talk about the feasibility of a reaction that is the reaction is occurring and these are the conditions for the reaction to occur spontaneously but it does not talk about the rate at which the reaction proceeds for example the allotropes of carbon graphite and diamond they exist in the nature but the stable form right the stable under ambient condition graphite is the stable form so the conversion thermodynamics says that diamond to graphite conversion is a spontaneous process but we know that diamonds last forever that means the conversion of diamond to graphite is thermodynamically feasible but is not kinetically driven so we you cannot talk about the rate of the reaction from the thermodynamics okay uh, in today's lecture we'll be focusing on classical thermodynamics there are two branches of thermodynamics one is classical another one is statistical statistical classical thermodynamics talk, talks about the bulk of the matter that means we consider the a state of a system at a microscopic macroscopic level whereas in statistical we deal at the microscopic level for example if i have a beaker in which i take water then according to classical thermodynamics we are take we are looking at water only at the uh, let's say what is the pressure atmospheric pressure what is the temperature of the system how much volume I, have i taken but i am not looking at the molecular level of water as to what is the bond length of water what is a what are the bond parameter so we are not going into the microscopic level so uh, we will be focusing only on the classical thermodynamics uh before building up the topic you must understand various terms the first term in the thermodynamics we have system now system is a part of the universe that is under consideration under investigation 
this means that if I am taking the, I am doing the reaction in a beaker, I can say that my beaker is a system. If I am doing the reaction on a table and I want some properties of, uh, you know, the entire this thing, so I will take this as a system. So whatever portion of the universe that is under consideration is system. The part of the universe that is not a system is called surrounding. So universe is system plus surrounding. The boundary is the one which separates system and surrounding. So there can be or which is called wall. Okay, these can be the uh, imaginary wall or a proper wall, a boundary which is separating system and surrounding. Uh, in the open system, open system is the one in which there, there is no boundary between system and surrounding or in other words, matter and energy both can be exchanged with the surroundings. Whereas in the closed system, only the energy can be exchanged and not the matter, not matter. Okay. For example, if I take uh, water, hot water in a beaker, uh, without covering it with a lid, it will be an open system because the water vapors also can be exchanged with the surrounding and energy can also be exchanged. But suppose if I cover it with a glass lid, then it will become a closed system where now energy can be exchanged because the walls are not, uh, are not restricting it to flow. Uh, the energy can be exchanged whereas matter cannot. Okay. In the isolated system, what happens is in the in isolated system, neither matter nor energy can be exchanged. So if we say that the wall which is responsible uh, or which is there in the closed system are the diathermal walls and isolated system, it is the adiabatic walls. So in a thermos flask, we have the adiabatic condition where neither the matter nor the energies are exchanged. Now we have what are thermodynamic properties. Basically, the thermodynamic properties are uh, derived from the thermodynamic four basic thermodynamic variables, which are pressure, pressure, volume, temperature and composition of the system. So uh, a state of a system is defined by these four things. What are thermodynamic properties? These are derived from the state of a system and these can be categorized into intensive and extensive properties. The properties which are dependent on the, matter, uh, the amount of matter comes into the uh, category of uh, extensive variables. The easiest way to remember is that intensive means independent of the matter. Extensive, the properties which are dependent on the amount of matter. So in the intensive uh, variables, like we have temperature. Temperature is an intensive property because if you have a system and if you uh, the system is let's say at, is at temperature T and if you divide this system into two half, the two halves will also be at T temperature. So whatever is the amount of substance, the property is independent of that, uh, the is property is independent. So temperature is the intensive variable. Uh, Extensive variables on the other hand, let's say you have energy, energy, uh, internal energy, all sorts of energies, internal energy, enthalpy, you have Gibbs free energy, all these comes as the uh, Gibbs free energy, all these are extensive uh, properties. Also heat capacity, heat capacity is also extensive properties. So all the thermodynamic properties can be categorized into these two parts.
Then as I said the state of a system is defined by the these variables. Suppose I have water at 25 degree Celsius, one atmospheric pressure, then my P and T are defined. So and if I have certain volume, then my V is also defined. Let us say I have 5 ml of water. So my all these three state of a systems are defined. Uh, if I make any change on this system, then whatever is my if let us say it was P1, T1 and V1 then the final state of a system will be let us say if I uh, have uh, raised the temperature of the system keeping pressure constant. So, whatever is a new pressure if if it is a changed pressure you will write P2 if it is a same pressure we will write P1 or T2 and if the volume of the system changes because if I am keeping P constant volume will definitely change this will be the new state of a system. So, in entire thermodynamics you have to define what is a state of a system. I have not taken composition here into consideration because I am taking only one matter one water, water as your uh, constituent. Then we have state functions. So, in thermodynamics the state of a system uh, all the parameters such as internal energy, enthalpy, Gibbs free energy, Helmholtz energy, all these are state functions. A uh, state function is the one which is dependent only on the initial and final value and is not dependent on the path by which the state has been achieved. For example, in the previous uh, slide, I showed you the uh, state change of water from uh, let us say 25 degree Celsius to let us say some other higher temperature, let us say 35 degree Celsius. I can reach to that state by heating up the sample or by placing a hotter object near water uh, beaker or by uh, introducing certain electrical current because electricity also produces heat effect also by placing certain magnets so magnetic work can also be there so the uh, final state of a system is uh, 35 degree celsius but the path by which the state has been acquired is immaterial in case of state function. So, uh, state functions and path functions are uh, categorized. So, only your work and heat these two are path function which are dependent on the path by which the state has been achieved and all the other functions your uh, energy internal energy enthalpy internal energy enthalpy H, then Gibbs free energy, then Helmholtz energy, all these are your state functions. What properties or what are the features that uh, differentiate between state function and path function? The state functions and path dependent functions are categorized by Euler's theorem of exactness which says that the order of differentiation for a state function if it is dependent on two variable is immaterial. What does it say? That if I have a state function f uh, phi which is dependent on the two variables temperature or pressure or any two variables or any two variables uh, your x and y or differentiating phi with respect to y keeping x constant and then doing the differentiation again. So, according to Euler's theorem the order of differentiation in a mixed derivative is immaterial in case of a state function. So, uh, suppose I have this as a dependent variables and these two are independent variables. If I do the partial differentiation, then partial differentiation of phi with respect to x keeping y constant will be my first differentiation. And similarly, if I carry out the differentiation of phi with respect to y keeping x constant, this is my first differentiation. Now, repeat the process by taking second di differentiation of this function with respect to y keeping x constant now and differentiation of this with respect to x keeping y constant. So, what I have done is I have uh, differentiated but uh, the order is different. 
According to the Euler's theorem, in case of exact differential, this order of differentiation is immaterial. So these two are same. That is, d2 phi of dy dx is equal to d2 phi of dx dy. So this happens in case of volume, this happens in case of pressure, both are your state functions, this happens in case of entropy, enthalpy, internal energy, gives free energy and all sorts of state functions. Only in case of work and uh, heat, your, you have inexact differentials. Uh, now let us start with the heat and work. In thermodynamics, we are mainly focusing on the mechanical work mechanical work so uh, heat is also heat is one form of energy and work is done when the heat is absorbed or released from the system so it is the energy flow from the system at higher temperature to the one at lower temperature it is a transitory uh, state and the net effect is the change in internal energy and what is the sign convention always remember whenever heat flows into the system it is positive taken as positive heat taken in the system and heat released by the system is always negative if we are giving up the system is giving heat it is uh, it is negative heat taken by the system positive uh, what is the SI unit it is joules only because it is a form of energy as far as work is concerned it is how the energy is utilized by the system and is performing mechanical work mechanical work is the PV work pressure and volume work how it is changing now sign convention according to this work done on the system is always positive on the system is positive and by the system work done by the system is negative this we have to remember in the entire thermodynamics because it is very important now uh, last portion of the important terms in thermodynamics includes various processes quickly as the name suggests isothermal is the one where temperature remains constant other changes pressure volume changes keeping temperature constant adiabatic is keeping heat constant dq is equal to zero isothermal is dt equal to zero isobaric is keeping pressure of the system constant whatever changes we perform on the system keeping pressure constant comes as isobaric cyclic process is the one where we reach to the start of the uh, we reach at the beginning of the process by repeating the process okay so it is a cyclic process is the one where initial state and final state of the system matches so it is represented by the cyclic integral so any function which is uh, which is cyclic is represented like this reversible and irreversible processes in thermodynamics uh, are defined as the in the reversible process the state of a system is changed from, is changed only infinitesimally from its original state so that if you undo the change the system gets back to its normal position so a reversible process is the one which can be up, uh, obtained by only producing a very small change in the irreversible process the state of the system is changed in such a manner that the, it cannot be br brought back to the original state that is the changes are finite changes so all the uh, processes that occur in nature are uh, irreversible processes those processes which are spontaneous are irreversible processes in this topic we have introduce the concept of thermodynamics to you and uh, what all are important terms which are uh, which are there in thermodynamics which you should know before moving on to the next chapter that is first law of thermodynamics and introduction of enthalpy and internal energy to know more about this topic you can refer to the book by s chand publishing and the link of the ebook is given in the description box if you found this topic interesting, please like, share and subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for future updates. Thank you.
the permission of the copyright holder.